We have the Go All Out event in Pokemon Go. So today we're gonna to give you the top tips to help you guys max out on this event. Number one, it's a great event. Number two, we have brand new starters. Number three, it's already out. So we gotta get into the details. So welcome to the Trainer Club. Here we go. The Go All Out event in Pokemon Go is live all the way until the 10th, which is gonna be Tuesday at 8 p.m. local time. So please make sure to go out there, do as much of this event as you possibly can because we have brand new starters in the game. Obviously you guys have seen it, pretty cool starters for myself, especially the Rillaboom. I'm super stoked about this Pokemon. I can't wait to see it get the Frenzy Plant at some point and I can't wait to max out one of those Pokemon. I just think it looks incredibly cool and that's the only reason why. But we're gonna go over all the details so do not go away from anything because we wanna make sure number one, you max out in the event. Number two, check out any of the good Pokemon. And number three, see what's going on. So let's jump into the details. For this event, we are getting two times catch XP and two times evolution XP. So what I would suggest doing, if you guys are going after this type of XP, number one, this is a pretty long event to have double catch XP, guys. This can give you a ton of XP every single spotlight hour. Please make sure to take advantage of it. All of the Wooloos, please make sure to catch them because the excellent throws are very easy. Score Bunny is actually a pretty easy excellent throw as well. And make sure to hit curveball excellent throws, even if you have to use regular raspberries to help speed up your catching to make sure this happens. If you don't even want to use an egg, that's fine. But if you do use an egg, you're in and around 4,500 XP per catch, which is nothing to look over. Guys, if you think about it, doing five catches like that is equivalent to doing one raid with a lucky egg. And you don't have to pay for that raid, which is very cool. So that's something to look out for. And then at the same time that you are catching on these lucky eggs, if you're going to evolve these Pokemon, you might as well do the first evolution of all of them on the lucky egg to get that little bit extra XP. And if you're looking to capitalize on evolution XP, you're typically looking for Pokemon such as Weedle, Caterpie, Pidgey, all those 12 candy per evolve Pokemon are going to be your best friends or even Pokemon that you have way too much candy of that you don't really care too much about and you don't care about blowing through all that candy. Make sure to do those evolutions. But the best and most efficient way to get XP in this game is excellent curveball throws. And obviously, we have the Grookey, the Score Bunny, and the Sobble that are going to be making their debuts, as well as Dreepy. And Dreepy goes into Dragapult, and Dragapult is going to be a ghost and a dragon Pokemon. And let's not forget about all the people in the United Kingdom that are gonna be getting the Stone Journer. So we have a brand new regional Pokemon that I'm excited to get in the very near future. And for all of the brand new Pokemon, it's gonna be 25 candies for the first evolution and then 100 candies for the second evolution. So for all of those out there, from the Score Bunny all the way down to the Dreepy, you're gonna be using the exact same candy. So please make sure to pine at them trade them because we are in the new season so you don't need any type of distance to get XL candy for these. And please do not forget that we have the brand new shinies being introduced in the game which is going to be Squovet as well as Wulu. So please make sure to check as many of those Pokemon as you possibly can because the shinies are now in the game. Starting off with all our tips, tip number one. So as far as the spawns, we are going to be getting the three starters. We're also going to be getting Squovit as well as Wulu. And then if you are lucky, some trainers might be able to find a Dreepy. So I have not seen a Dreepy yet. Have you guys seen one in the wild? Because they are also going to be in eggs. And let's jump into some of the meta attacker standpoint for some of these Pokemon. Well, let's start off with our starters. So actually, the Rillaboom is the 10th overall ranked grass type Pokemon in the game. That is going to be not too far behind the Shadow Sceptile and Shadow Venusaur, as well as the Shadow Torterra. It's going to be 37.29. As far as the fire type Pokemon, we unfortunately do not have a present here. And as far as the water type we also do not have a present here. We still have the Greninja sitting at one of the top spots for the non-shadow budget water counters. And unfortunately for the Dragapult, I mean, we're looking at some of the top ghost and dragons in the game. Unfortunately, that one is not gonna stack up, but that doesn't mean that we don't have PVP places for these Pokemon. But most importantly, before we go into that, that Rillaboom really impresses me. That means once the shadow does come out, that Pokemon is gonna be an extremely strong Pokemon. And once it gets Frenzy Plant, guys, these Pokemon that are shadows that are above it already have Frenzy Plant. Once it does come out, that's gonna be an extremely impressive Pokemon. As far as the Rillaboom, in the Great League, it's ranked 684, Ultra League, 633, Master League, 362. 
So unfortunately for the Rillaboom, doesn't look too great. As far as the Cinderace, 703 in the Great League, 494 in the Ultra League, 273 in the Master League, which is not too great as well. As far as the Inteleon, 900 in the Great League, 651 in the Ultra League, and 398 in the Master League. Once again, not great. But at the same time, guys, we have to give these Pokemon just a teeny bit of grace because they do not have their Calm Day moves yet. But as far as the Dragapult, it's looking at 198 in the Great League, ranked in the Ultra League at 83 with Astonish, Breaking Swipe, and Shadow ball 115 15 as far as the pvp moves but the best ranking is going to be in the master league at rank 46 this pokemon is quite nice to be able to play with so i'm excited to see some of you guys add this pokemon to your team let me know in the comments below if you think that it could be as a part of your team and then as far as the stone journer we have 774 in the great league 568 in the ultra league and 290 in the master league then as far as the double in the Great League, we have 131 at a 115.15. In the Ultra League, 173. As far as the Greedent, in the Great League, 103 at a 012.14. So nothing that is going to shake up the top meta for PvP Pokemon. But that doesn't stop us there because we are going to go on to tip number two. Tip number two is going to be about egg hatches because we have some of these Pokemon in eggs. Well, for some of these Pokemon, I would suggest that eggs aren't really the place to play for. But if you are able to get yourself 10 kilometer eggs, which is basically just hatching eggs and trying to save up on those 10 kilometers, you can get a Dreepy in those eggs. In the five kilometer eggs, we're gonna have all those starters added in. Please don't forget that we do have Larvesta in there. In seven kilometer eggs, we're gonna be getting Galarian and Alolan Pokemon in those, which you may consider hatching and then as the 10 kilometer eggs this is going to be where you do find the dreepy so if you guys are interested in trying to hatch this little friendly ghost dragon pokemon this would be where you get it as well as some pretty good hatches in here as well and the 100 iv for the dreepy coming out of eggs is 438 as far as hatching eggs do i really suggest you guys do this probably not i'm not the biggest fan of hatching eggs i feel like it doesn't really serve my gameplay I mean, yeah, when I do have them, I hatch them. I really hatch the 12 kilometer eggs like you guys hear me talk about for the Stardust purposes. And beyond that, I don't really rely on eggs unless I know that they have really high shiny rates for certain events. And this one is just trying to get a Pokemon that seems like you can still get in the wild. So I'm not overly sold on hatching eggs in this standpoint, which then leads us into tip number three. Tip three is about the field research as well as some of the other research. We have a catch five Pokemon task, which I do like because you can get 10 Pokeballs or five Great Balls, three Pineapps or 500 Stardust. Obviously the last two I don't care about, but the Great Balls and the Pokeballs is good to be able to do it because catching five Pokemon is super easy. And then you can do catch eight Pokemon for the starters. Another very easy task for the Grookey 100% IV, it's gonna be 465. And Score Bunny and Sobble make it easy at 470. So very close in all the CPs of this Pokemon which is quite surprising because usually the starters are tiered down from about the higher threes to the low fours and then up from there for different types. And then we have use five berries to help catch Pokemon. The Squovet is going to be 404 and the Wulu is going to be 302. So those are all the field research, but then we also have ourselves special research as well. We have catch eight Pokemon, which you guys should have done. And then you can choose a path, which is going to be Grookey, Sobble, or Score Bunny. And I have seen from a couple of gaming that whichever you choose, it's going to change the background of your postcard book. So if you guys do choose one of those paths, you can go Go ahead and check out where your postcards are and see the background and all of these are going to be similar um, you have catch three pokemon take a snapshot and then you'll get a grookey with a thousand xp you have uh, catch 88 pokemon spin 25 pokestops or gym explore eight kilometers evolve a grookey for 10 great balls then you have the catch 88 pokemon send eight gifts to friends hatch eight eggs for the 50 grookey candy evolve a thwacky for three rare candies and then a Wooloo encounter. And then we have the rewards are gonna be coming back soon. And so all of them do follow suit, except you're getting different encounters and different candy depending on each one that you choose. I don't really think there's a right answer here. I mean, you're getting them in the wild anyway. So whichever one you like the most, please go ahead and choose that Pokemon. And then there's gonna be collection challenges as well. But the overarching most important things is number one, the shinies. We have the Squovet as well as the Wooloo that are gonna be out. Number two, two times catch XP. Please make sure to go out and throw as many excellent throws as possible and number three stack up on all the xl candy for these pokemon while they are prevalent use a mega that's going to 
match the typing. If you guys do want a Mega, you can use Primal Groudon. That is going to cover both of the grass and the fire for XL Candy. That's the easiest one to be able to go ahead and do. But most importantly, go out there, catch Pokemon, and enjoy yourself. Thank you guys for being here as always. Love and appreciate you guys. To all of my likers, comments, subscribers, Patreon members. Everybody takes your support, subscription, and participation to XL. I'm going to see you guys out in the next video. Peace. I want to take this time to thank everybody who supports me in every facet. It means the world to me and an extra special thank you to all my Patreons. I greatly appreciate the extra support to continue to allow me to pursue Pokemon Go full time, allowing me to create my daily video uploads in the most timely fashion for everyone's benefit. Plus, I get the amazing experience of sharing my creative processes behind the scenes and raiding all around the globe with select upper tiers. Thank you everybody for being a part of the Trainer Club. You all mean the absolute world to me, and I will see you guys out on the next video.